Hey guys, welcome back to another scrap mechanic video and today we're gonna check out how to script a scrap mechanic part. So as you can see, this is the website to check out the Lua API. This is a website for to compile some Lua, a JSON validator and the Lua tutorial. So um, let's first start with the beginning and create a mod. blocks and parts all right and then you'll want to open that folder and you'll see that we end up in here uh, first of all we'll want to create a new part so we'll go to objects database shape sets and parts you can see the part list is empty it's an empty array so we'll want to add a part over here what do we do we go to the scrap mechanic files objects database shape sets and we're just going to copy paste the logic gate. So as you can see over here is the logic gate. The part starts with this bracket and ends with this bracket. So we'll just copy this and paste it in here. Now legacy UID is something the developers did to have backwards compatibility. You can just get rid of that and you want to do a no UID. So you'll want to go to the uidgenerator.net and generate a UUID 4, version 4. Copy that and you'll want to paste that in your parts.json. You can also get rid of the interactive.json from the game itself. And instead of logic, this defines that it's a logic gate, we're going to do scripted. So how does that work? We can go to the Lua API and in here you'll see all kinds of stuff but we'll go to script classes and this is stuff that is defined inside the script and this is how you define your script that it's a scripted thing so you copy paste this and paste it in here now always make sure that your JSON file is valid you can see these brackets and everything ends with a comma, it's except for the last item. So for sure you also need to have this item scripted end with a comma. Now data is something optional, as they say, you don't need that. Class name, my shape, you can really get anything. So I'm going to call this uh, YouTube and tutorial one. So let's create this file you do. And basically you go back in here in the objects, no, the main folder, go to scripts as defined here. You can see scripts and then we create this file. Now you can see dot text. If you don't see that, you'll want to go to window and then show file extensions and you will, you'll want to click that. Now we call this file like this, don't make sure that it's not a text file, make sure it's a Lua file. All right, now we're in here and in this file, we will want to define this tutorial thingy. Now, how do we do that? Um, first of all, let's check out the template I made. It's a generic class template with a lot of stuff that's all defined in here and down here and basically you, you don't need everything we're just gonna do the basics today so copy this uh, we will want this uh, this on update this runs every frame this runs when you place the block down. It's all on client side and server side. I'll, I'll get into that in a second. We'll want this and this. So this runs on the server um, and stuff runs on the client. Now we'll get into how that exactly works in a second first of all 
we defined this class to be tutorial one. So let's rename this all the tutorial one. All right. Um, Let's first of all open the game and see if we can find our block in it and we can connect logic gates to it. Right, so we'll want to use this note back and start the world. All right, now because we didn't generate an icon for it yet in the mod tool, it doesn't have an icon and we can place it down like this and you will see that it throws an error. Why does it throw an error? Because this is not saved yet. Now if you want to be able to edit this while in the game and just destroying and placing the part down again and then seeing that it throws no extra errors because we saved it now. You'll want to do one extra trick. You'll want to go to Scrum Mechanic, Properties, Start Options, and make sure that it has dash dev in here. That makes sure that when you change the script, the game automatically refreshes it and uses that no script when you place down blocks. Now, as you can see, we have a logic gate over here and we can connect stuff like buttons or logic gates but it won't do anything yet as you can see we need to script what it does so let's script it to be a AND gate now an AND gate can have more than one parent so let's give it minus one minus one defines that there is an infinite amount of parents possible by the way parent is basically this over here and this is a child so yeah, that's what's that. Um, for the input type and output type, there are several types, logic, power, bearing, seated, piston, but uh, for most you just want logic and power. Now we're doing a logic gate, so we're gonna do logic. Now to define that it should output a signal when you have two inputs that are on, we will want to do that on the server. And also you can see it doesn't do this, even though we saved this, but we haven't saved it yet. Okay, save it, destroy, and it works. Right, now, how do we make this an AND gate? First of all, let's get all the parents. We get the parents like this, we call the interactable. So self is like the instance of this class, and the interactable is the thing that's connected to it, which makes it interactable with stuff and then we get the parents. Now, so if there's parents, then we'll want to do stuff. We'll want to loop over all the parents and check if they are all true. And only if they are all true, we will want to output a signal. Oh, by the way, local defines that this parents variable is only accessible within this function. So if you don't make this local, then suddenly other blocks can read this value which you don't want so oh so be sure to always put local before your variables right so we'll want to loop over all the parents and you do that like this you get the id and the parent from all the pairs parents that's how it works and if parent oh be sure to have correct naming if parent.active, so if the parent is active, then what? Then we have one active parent, because we're looping over everything. So basically, an AND gate works like this. It's true if there's parents, so if there's parents, it will be true. And all the parents need to be on. So, so the output is true if there's all parents. But if there's one parent that is not true, so if not active then the output is false so now we have output true and if there's one parent that is not active it'll be false now we want to output this on the output so how do we do that instead of having a janky solution i'm just going to put this over here 
if there's no parents, the output will be false. But if there's parents, the output can be true. So that way we don't need a janky solution in here. And basically, self dot interactable active equals to outputs. So basically, if there's parents, the output can be true. If there's a parent that is not active though, it will be false. And if there's no parents, then basically it will just be false anyway. Parents is by the way a table and that, that's how you can access the first parent if you want to. But that, that's a janky thing. Never do that. Never ever. Always go for a loop. So if we save this and we connect this like this, you can see if there's no parents, no parents connected, it won't even go in this if loop. It'll be false and the output will be false. Now, if there's parents though, so there's parents and they are all on, the output will be on. And why is that? Can we seriously place a budget gate? Wow. Okay, so again, if there's no parents, it's on. Yay. Thanks, crap mechanic. <sighs> Apparently, <coughs> checking if parents is janky and doesn't work. So we're gonna do hashtag parents that gets the number. So basically, if the amount of parents is bigger than zero, then we check and that seems to work. So always use hashtag for um, amount of parents. And parents is a table and whatever. If you want to check out how tables work and stuff, just go to the reference manual over here, uh, link down in the description below. Anyway, if there is a parent though, you can make them all on and then the output will be on. Now, how do we make this light up though? So that is something that happens on the client. And the really easy solution to do that is just go to on update. And if self dot interactable active is, is true, then uh, you can do a is equal to true or you can just leave that out. It's exactly the same. So if it's equal to true, you will want to light up the display. Now, how do we do that? If we go to the game objects, interactable, and you can see over here all the, the variables and functions and stuff you can do on it. But there is one particular one that is really interesting and that's the UV index. Now UV index selects a different frame for um, like the, the texture on the display. So you can see this, uh, this is the logic gate that we made and it uses this texture. So let's go to that texture. And as you can see, there's like these on here. And if you want to select a different one in here, you'll want to use set UV frame index and also be sure to have this stuff over here. Now, this is the first one, second, third, and so on. Now, if you want to select this one, you need to do zero though. This is zero indexed and Lua tables are one indexed. That's something else, but um, I, We'll get to that in a, like some other time. If we want to select this one though, to show that it's on, we need to use six. So self.interactable and then semi, semi-colon to define that we do a function on it. Set UV frame index and we'll want to do six if it's on. All right, so if we do that, you can see it now lights up, but it doesn't go off. How do we do that? We do else zero. So if the interactable is active, then we show the sixth frame and else we show the zero, uh, the, zero the first one actually, but whatever, num number zero. So now you can see it still doesn't work because we didn't save it and now it works. 
So that's a very easy tutorial. Um, if you want to make an OR gate instead, that's also very easy. Basically, this would be false, and this would be true, and this would be like this. So if there is a parent that is active, then the output is true. Done. It's that easy. Now, if you want to do multiple functions inside this block, you can do an interact thingy, so you can do press E on it to change the thing. So if we go to the template, we can go to on interact to change the mode. But let's do that another time because that's quite, you will need to do some networking as well. And that's a higher level stuff. So uh, let's, let's keep it at this. Try to copy this and like do stuff with it and try to make something of your own. That's the best way to learn actually. Anyway, that's it. Quick little tutorial. See you in the next one.